8th grade open up resources illustrative mathematics unit 8 lesson 7 a proof of the Pythagorean theorem problem number one a find the lengths of the unlabeled sides the Pythagorean theorem tells us that a squared plus b squared equals c squared so in this case we can use 2 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared 2 squared is 4 6 squared is 36 and 4 plus 36 equals 40. So we know that c squared equals 40. The length of the missing side would be the square root of 40, which is approximately 6.32 units. Let's look at the next triangle. We can use 8 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared. 8 squared is 64, and 6 squared is 36. 64 plus 36 equals 100, and 100 equals c squared. Since the square root of 100 is 10, then the missing side length for this triangle is 10 units. So the missing side length for the first triangle is approximately 6.32 units, and the missing side length for the second triangle is 10 units. B. One segment is n units long and the other is p units long. Find the value of n and p. Each small grid square is one square unit. I've added these two lines to make an imaginary right triangle. One side length would be 3, the other side length would be 1. We can use this to find the missing side length of n. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's use 1 squared plus 3 squared to find c squared. 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, 1 plus 9 is 10, so 10 equals c squared. The missing side length for n would be the square root of 10. Let's look at the next grid. They provided us with line p. Let's make a right triangle out of this. One imaginary side length is 3 units, the other imaginary side length is 4 units. Remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this case, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, or for this triangle, p squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. Since 9 plus 16 is 25, then c squared equals 25. The square root of 25 is 5, so c equals 5. And in this case, the missing side length P, that equals 5 units. Do something nice. Like this video, say something in the comments, tell a friend about this channel, and hit that thanks button. Problem number 2. Use the areas of the two identical squares to explain why 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared without doing any calculations. The shape on the left contains a square that measures 12 squared and it contains a square that measures 5 squared. It also contains two rectangles that are 5 by 12. Those two rectangles can be cut in half to form four triangles. And now look at the shape on the right. That shape contains one large square that's 13 by 13 or 13 squared but it also contains those same four triangles as the shape on the left. That means that the shape on the left that contains the 12 squared and the 5 squared have the same amount left over as the shape on the right that contains the 13 squared, proving that their areas are equal. Problem number three from 8th grade unit 8 lesson 5. Each number is between which two consecutive integers? A. The square root of 10. The square root of 10 falls somewhere between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16 because the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of 16 is 4. So the number represented by the square root of 10 is somewhere between 3 and 4. B. The square root of 54. The square root of 54 falls somewhere between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64 because 7 times 7 equals 49 and 8 times 8 
equals 64. The value for the square root of 54 would fall somewhere between 7 and 8. C. The square root of 18. The number that represents the square root of 18 would fall somewhere between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25, because 4 times 4 equals 16 and 5 times 5 equals 25. So the number that represents the square root of 18 would fall somewhere between 4 and 5. D. The square root of 99. The number that represents the square root of 99 will fall somewhere between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100, because 9 times 9 equals 81 and 10 times 10 equals 100. The number represented by the square root of 99 will fall somewhere between 9 and 10. E. The square root of 41. The number that represents the square root of 41 will fall somewhere between the square root of 36 and the square root of 49, because 6 times 6 equals 36 and 7 times 7 equals 49, the number that represents the square root of 41 will be between 6 and 7. Problem number 4 from 8th grade Unit 8 Lesson 3. A. Give an example of a rational number and explain how you know it is rational. Rational number. The set of rational numbers is the set of all numbers which can be expressed in the form A over B. In other words, it can be expressed as a fraction. This is true where A and B are integers and B is not equal to zero. The decimal representation of a rational number either terminates or repeats. A few examples are negative 2.5, 3 fourths, 4.7 repeating, or 7.329, 329, and so on. B. Give three examples of irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be represented as a simple fraction. Here's some important properties of irrational numbers. Their decimals never repeat and their decimals never end. Here's some examples. Pi, which never ends and never repeats, the square root of 2, and the square root of 99. It never repeats and never ends. Problem number 5. From 8th grade Unit 7 Lesson 4. Write each expression as a single power of 10. A. 10 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 0. Remember, 10 to the power of 0 has a value of 1. So this is the same as 10 to the power of 5 times 1. And anything times 1 is itself. So we can rewrite this as 10 to the power of 5. B. 10 to the power of 9 over 10 to the power of 0. Remember, 10 to the power of 0 is the same as 1. So this is the same as 10 to the power of 9 over 1. And 10 to the power of 9 over 1 is equal to 10 to the power of 9 divided by 1. Anything divided by 1 is itself. So we can rewrite this as 10 to the power of 9. Problem number 6 from 8th grade unit 4 lesson 15. Andre is ordering ribbon to make decorations for a school event. He needs a total of exactly 50.25 meters of blue and green ribbon. Andre needs 50% more blue ribbon than green ribbon for the basic design, plus an extra 6.5 meters of blue ribbon for accents. How much of each color of ribbon does Andre need to order? Representing the basic design, we can write blue plus green equals 50.25. We can use B plus G equals 50.25. The information also tells us that Andre needs 50% more blue ribbon than green ribbon. That means 50% more of 100% of the green. That's 150% of green, or 150% G, which can be represented as 1.5 G, or 1.5 times G. 
That means that the amount of blue ribbon has to be 1.5 times G. We also need to add an extra 6.5 meters of blue ribbon for the accents. Since the amount of blue ribbon is equal to 1.5 times G, we can substitute the B with a 1.5 times G or a 1.5 G. Now the equation reads 1.5 G plus 6.5 plus G equals 50.25. This portion here represents the amount of blue ribbon that Andre needs. And this portion represents the amount of green ribbon that Andre needs. And this represents the total amount of all the ribbon that Andre needs. Let's collect like terms. 1.5 G plus G. Well, G is equal to 1 G. So this is like 1.5 G plus 1 G. 1.5 plus 1 is 2.5. So that's a total of 2.5 G. Bring down the 6.5. And now the equation reads 2.5 G plus 6.5 equals 50.25. Subtract 6.5 from both sides. And now the equation reads 2.5 G equals 43.75. To solve for G, we need to divide both sides by 2.5. Now we know that the amount of green ribbon that Andre needs is 17.5 meters. And we already know that the amount of blue ribbon that he needs is going to be one and a half times that, or 1.5 times 17.5. One and a half times 17.5 is 26.25. Add the extra 6.5 meters of blue ribbon for accents, and you should have a total of 32.75 meters of blue ribbon 17.5 meters of green ribbon, and that should total 50.25 meters of blue and green ribbon. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video and hitting that thanks button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.